So I'm sitting here in a corner eating my breakfast, as I usually do before I go off for my business day, and walking and pushing my night gear. If it is a warm night, I don't need to pull out all my blankets. If it's a cold night, I have several sleeping bags. Unfortunately, some players stole one of my black sleeping bags from my kids, or my marvelous upcoming nuptials and wife. But what happened was an old man walked by me to go into the office supply store. And I believe as he was coming back, he might have noticed one of my signs visible. And what he started to do was play. He gave me some serious eye contact, but it wasn't friendly, and it wasn't welcoming, and it wasn't hospitable. And he had money in his hand, cash money. I couldn't tell how much because it's not my business. He might have been putting his money away from his purchases, or he might have been tried to play with me, or he might have been ready to provide one of the other people who sits around here named Andrew some money. I made a look a different way at the direction of God, and I made a look to acknowledge my buddy down the block, who I've seen a few times, and we're just cordial and neighborly, and he's a mighty panhandler, not like me, but different from me, and he's got a medical condition, and that's none of your business, but he told me that, and he shares that publicly on a sign, no less. But anyway, then I made eye contact with the man again, and still, no acknowledgement in his eyes that he's trying to help me or engage me in conversation. And so I just keep doing my thing, which is digesting my food and sitting quietly. And then the man, who's elderly, probably in his mid-60s, early 70s, just and slightly overweight, saunders off. I'm not someone who's accustomed to being played with by total strangers, but this is the sort of thing that men do. They try to test you to see if you're soliciting. I'm not. I have no presumption to know why he was monking with his money in public. In my self-protection programs, we would have said, that's not really wise. I sometimes catch myself doing that, but I usually try to put my money away before I leave a store. If I have an intent to give someone money, and I'm told to by the Lord, and he says, even when I only had a dollar, I would give it to my buddy Jeff on Six and Green, who sometimes sat where Kevin did when Kevin wasn't there on the scene. If I only had a little small paltry pocket change and I had nothing else, and God said give it, I would, <clears throat> because that meant God had me for later in the day, and that was usually true. But the point is that a man's money is his money. And what a lot of panhandlers think is that someone else's presence, sitting out of the rain, out of the heat, out of the exhaustion of being homeless or a traveler like me, is their right to take. I probably told a story once or twice about how magnificent Bob, the five-year veteran, six-year veteran now panhandler that hangs himself outside of a taco shop and near Target most of the time, and occasionally sits in at Kevin's spot, monkeyed with a gift donation that a young set of twins were trying to gift to me, probably sent by someone in either the military or the political realm for me. And he actually interfered with that. And then he tried to make me feel bad about it, and then he got mad at me about it like a child, and I was just like, I'm not 12 anymore. Those gentlemen chose me to provide me that money. Their first mistake was the socially inappropriateness of saying, would you mind stepping over here and talking to me a minute? And then I would have left my pack right there, uh, where I had been sharing some pizza with Masterful Bob, which was a bit of a risk to me because I don't usually do that, but, and gone over and talked with them a minute. And they could have handed me the money quietly. At the same time, they could have monkeyed around a little bit further on the street and come back when I was alone, or found me when I was alone. You see, the challenge that people have to get in their minds is that any person that sees a person in poverty might get an inkling from God what to do. And if God gives you an inkling of what to do, you have to decide, is God telling me to do this for me to gain more blessings in my life or to be willing to give up something of my life for Jesus? Or am I being monkeyed with by some masterful person who doesn't really need my help but does this for a living, actually chooses to do that work for a living? There's sort of a difference because a panhandler with a cup that I like to sometimes make fun of because what it visually is being put in my mind by God to look like to me or to God, 
may not seem that way or feel that way to them, but it is a very microscopic business. And there is practically competition, but it's not competition in this way, because the work that is being done is not totally philanthropic, but it's sort of as philanthropic, but it's really more non-for-profit in a way, because a person walking by those people has an absolute right to decide who they're going to bestow their beneficiaries or their benefactories, and I'm their benefactors. <coughs> Benevolent, sorry. On. Who are they going to gift on behalf of the Lord? If they're a Christian or if they're a, a Wiccan or if they're someone who is more of into magicians like in Harry Potter lore, who are they going to spread their light on? So when you're looking at spreading your light, I want you to really think about how that light is reflected back to you. That most people will be grateful for a loving light given to them. And most people who have intelligence, education, and experience in the real world, and I mean the real world of work, a long-term job, long-term career, long-term education, long-term society interaction, are not going to be insulted by any level of donation, but they will be mightily insulted by someone who's trying to play a game, make a scene, create a script off of a lie. 